So next I want to look at gentleness. And I, I said before that kindness was patience in action. Um, think of gen gentleness as being the balance of love in action. Um, and what I mean by this is that there are times when we need to um, we need to uh, give or receive tough love. Now, tough love is actually a biblical principle. Um, if I ask you, did Jesus love everyone? Then you'd all say, yes, he did love everyone. So if I say to you, well, when he went to the temple courts and he overturned all that the money changers were doing and he, he kind of said what he said and kicked them all out, did he love them while he was doing that? Yes. Well, yes, he did. See, it was tough love. Sometimes love is, has to be there to confront something that we are doing. And you need tough love to do that. Um, scripture talks about as well, it talks about the importance of discipline. See, dif discipline is often tough love. Yeah? To discipline someone. Because sometimes it's not easy to be disciplined or to discipline someone. But we have to do that. But I want us to understand that if you, from day one, were in an environment that all that happened was that you received tough love, that you were disciplined over everything that you did, then actually the end result of that would be an unbalanced understanding of love. Yeah, because what would happen is that you, in a sense, you don't ever get told off. Well, how is a child going to grow up if all that happens is that they're only ever told off. How is a child going to grow up if all that happens is they're only ever disciplined? Now, understand I said that gentleness was the balance of love and action. Because see, the same is true. That if a child is never disciplined, then actually the end result is the same as if they're always disciplined. You have an unbalanced and unhealthy situation. Take this to um, how God treats us. So there's a scripture that says that God does not treat us as our sins deserve. Yeah? Because the reality is this. If God treated you as Every time that you failed, if God smacked you over the head, every time that you failed, would that be an environment that would be conducive to growing in our love for God? No, it wouldn't. But, He has to sometimes treat us with tough love. Other times, God treats us with great gentleness. He comes alongside us. He protects us under the shadow of his wing. He gently kind of will walk us through a situation. And we need to understand that love is not just this warm, fuzzy feeling. Yeah? But love has many aspects and attributes to it. And one of the most important attributes of love is gentleness. We need to be able to um, treat others with gentleness when the situation is appropriate. Other times you might have to say to someone, you, you might have to demonstrate some tough love. You know, um. And then finally, the last one is self-control. Now, I probably don't need to say too much about self-control, um, other than we're generally rubbish at it. Okay? 
Now I understand we're talking about yeah, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, the, the, the things that the presence of God should manifest, be seen within my life, because they are the attributes of God. Now I don't know whether you've ever thought, but people often think, you know, when you say who is God, they often think God is love and, you know, he's kind of um, patient and good and kind and all these kind of things. But, but think about this, God is a God of self-control. Because if God weren't self-controlled, then can you imagine? It would be a mess, wouldn't it? So, quite simply, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Self-control is taking responsibility for your own actions. Again, we live in a world, we live in a society where everyone else is to blame for who I am. Yeah? Do you know that? Everyone is to blame for who I am. Everyone's to blame for my childhood, for how I turned out as an adult, for the things that I fail at. I'm not responsible for my own actions. It's someone else's fault. It's society. It's how I was treated. It's how what was dealt to me. A big part of self-control is actually saying, I'm responsible for my own actions. Irrespective of what was dealt to me. Irrespective of what I have to face. Irrespective of what I have to live with day, day to day. I'm responsible for my own actions. Simple illustration, right? I'm driving along in my car and some lunatic swerves in front of me. Right. Choice. Do I give them a piece of my mind and tell them what a lunatic they are? Right? Because that's what they deserve. Right? Don't they? Because they've been, they've been stupid. So they deserve me to tell them. Tough love, that is. Or do I exhibit self-control and not lose my temper? But they deserve to be told what an idiot they are. The trouble is that my Bible says, don't get angry. Because when I get angry, it's as if I've murdered. Self-control is not just taking responsibility for my actions. It's taking responsibility for how I react. Because there is no excuse to say, I'm like I am because of how all you are. Yeah? It's that, that classic, isn't it, that you see, have you ever seen the picture of all the fish and they're all swimming the same way? And then there's one fish and he's swimming the opposite way. There's an element of that that's about taking responsibility. It's doing what we should do, even when no one else is doing it. Even when we're surrounded by everything that's trying to stop us doing it. Now, my daughter has a tremendous theological understanding of this. When I talk about not blaming everyone and everything for who I am, Jasmine has a wonderful theological understanding of this, and it's this. Man up. Be responsible. Stand up and be counted, however you want to, however you want to express it. I am responsible for who I am. Irrespective of what you lot think I am, the world, not, you know, irrespective of who they say I am, irrespective of the label they're going to give me, I am responsible. 
Would you go to God? Would you go to the throne of God on the day of judgment and say, God, I thank you because I'm not like such and such. Well, he's going to say, well, I'm not asking you to be like such and such. I'm asking, who are you? And you say, Lord, it wasn't my fault that I sinned. It was those evil people that you put around me. He says, well, no. You're responsible for who you are. So, Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of these things we see in abundance in God. If God lives within you and I, and he does if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then those things of God should be seen in you and I. Let me finish with this little illustration. If you went and had a, um, a blood test, right, and that blood test came back and said you've got a vitamin D deficiency, right, what would be the sensible thing to do? Take a vitamin D supplement, right? Understand this though. If you lived healthily, got plenty of sun, blah, 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 would we have all these deficiencies that we have? We wouldn't have a lot of them, would we? If we had a diet that was healthy and a lifestyle that was healthy. But what we do is we don't have these things, so we look for these supplements all the time. You're better off having the healthy diet. What is a healthy diet for a believer? Prayer, worship, fellowship, study of the Word of God, yeah, evangelism. All of these things are part of a healthy diet for a believer. You take these and you won't need supplements. You take them and you won't be deficient. You allow the fruit of the Spirit to be evident in your life and to grow in your life. And you, will, you and I will not be deficient. And that's the place where we want to be. Amen.